You want a picture? Yeah, yeah, of course. Have you seen Tal? Hello, hello, give us a hug, hello. Good day. No worries, how are you? Excited? Excited, that's yes. good. Okay. Well, I can't read. I think I didn't uh, sleep or eat for the last past two or three days. Wow. Yes, it's not just this, but you know, it's after a lot of hard work. Yeah. And uh, I hope there is going to be a lot of people over here. Wow. And we have to close this slaughterhouse. Wow. Yes, this is what we're going to do every time you hear James and Joey. It's you. It's me. Yeah. Okay. Boom. And what I see here in front of me today are some of the most passionate, dedicated, strong people I've ever seen in my life. Thank you to Tal and to the ALF for inviting me to march with you in your country. Don't ever let the meat, dairy and egg industries tell us that what we are doing isn't working. It is working. And we are a powerful force and there are millions of us. Tell them that it is not okay. It is not okay what we do inside a slaughterhouse. People often ask me, Joey, how long to a vegan world? Well, it will happen a lot faster if we all stand up and work together. Never lose hope. We must fight every single day until total animal liberation. So right behind me here is the slaughterhouse here in Haifa. It smells really bad. It smells like decomposing animal flesh. It smells like feces in there. A horrible place for animals. The screams that we were playing before were the screams of the calves. It can be hard as an activist, but we have to stay strong. And we must always remind ourselves, no matter how hard it gets, it's nowhere near as hard as what the animals go through every day of their existence. I want to remind you all that we need to be there to support each other. Uh, oh, you inspired right. me a lot too, man. Yeah, but last year, you yeah, just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The person next to you might be doing it a lot harder than you. So just asking another activist if they're okay could mean the world to them. 
Give us a hug. Thank you so much for um, uh, Thank you so much for everything. Same thing. Really. Thank you. Respect, day. I love you too. Are you a vegan? Vegan. Vegan power. No, not alone. It's been a very emotional night. I've been quite exhausted. We've been putting in a lot of work, but it's so heartwarming to see so many people that love and care for animals standing up for justice. A vegan world is possible, but for it to manifest, we all need to collectively believe that it's possible. Okay, so we're in a taxi, we're on the way to the West Bank and it's behind the wall. There's a wall that separates uh, Palestine from Israel and we have to go around uh, to Abu Dis and we're going to go to the university there. You see the number, it's green and white. It's Palestinian number. Okay, so we're at the front of Al Quds University and inside they have a vegan restaurant so we're going to go in and show our support. Hello. 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 Nice to see you. I'm Joey. So this wall here, this is the wall that separates um, Jerusalem. So this side um, is the West Bank and on the other side is Israel. With a student activist building. Wow. Okay, so behind us here is the vegan cafe and restaurant called Sudfe. It translates into coincidence, which is pretty amazing, and it looks really beautiful out here. So let's go inside. Wow. I'm Joey. That's me. We are a little bit upset. We could we missed lunch. We could have had something uh, to eat. <laughs> so we work with um, two more than two hundred cats, like training many different things about identity, about uh, humor rights. Children uh, yeah. rights. Yeah. Then we talk about the violence and uh, animal rights. Yeah. Circle of violence. Yeah. The third part. What did you call it? The circle of violence. A circle of suffering. We're causing suffering and violence and death, and it comes back around. A very important point to make. If you do good, you get good in return. They gave us like an example. Yeah. The uh, soldier in, uh, in the street hits his father because the soldier here is the one who having the power. So the father would go home. Me. Take that out on his the wife, the, for example. Yeah. The wife for the older the brother, the, the older one against the, the younger, younger and the younger against, against the animal. animal. So, you, so um, you've been a, a victim of violence yourself, you're more likely to take that out. We shouldn't be doing good to get good in return though. It should just come from empathy, from the, from the, the it's a matter of justice. You want to be treated fairly, don't we? We all want to be treated fairly, that's what justice means, to be treated fairly. Equality. And this is why we don't treat animals in a way that we wouldn't want to be treated ourselves. And so it's our rule that, that uh, because we are victims, that didn't give us the rule uh, to, 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 to hurt another creatures. Yeah. yeah. And no, no, because we have to feed with these creatures. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, yeah. You should have, you're trying to uh, make them express more empathy instead of um, going the other way, which would be to, to commit the violence. So they come here, they have a meeting about what they want to achieve, mm. and this is, gives them a safe space to talk about it, and they, take, they bring it into action sort of thing. Wow. Um, is there any slaughterhouses in the West Bank that slaughter animals? Is there like a... Shepto? No, um... Oh, yes. Th there is a few? Yeah. We're working in a film, but it's not really, but I can show you. The, there's a film. In the same way that some people look to the animal, the same way that others look uh, for us, uh, against us as a Palestinian. Wow. When's this released? This is amazing. Oh, big things are happening here. That's great. Good for animals and yeah, we definitely support it. And we definitely, we wanted to come and tell the story here because, you know, we're obviously over there in Israel telling the story of the animal rights movement there. We wanted to come here in the West Bank, tell the story here. We're willing to go everywhere to 
uh, tell the story of the animal rights movement wherever we are, and we just yeah, we want to tell the whole world that this is happening. No matter where you go, there's people that are caring about animals. Here's the wall, it goes all the way around, all the way down. It's great that you still, after the situation, you can still uh, show compassion for animals at the same time, even after going, there's obviously a lot going on here. Like animals, they cannot speak as well. They, they're, they're, they're so vulnerable and yeah, they need people like us to speak up for them. And yeah, I just think it's great, very honorable and yeah, more people need to know about that. More people need to know. Okay, so we're just on our back, way back from the university. That was a really powerful discussion and it was such a beautiful place, an amazing vegan restaurant. And one of the things uh, one of the guys said to me, Hardy, which was really significant, he said, e even if we can't get our own rights, if we can't get our own human rights, we'd at least try to get the rights for the animals, which I thought that was a really humble thing to say. So they're doing some great work here and I'm really glad I came. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you very much. Very happy to be back in Israel. The last time I come here was for the big march. It was amazing. We're talking to the public and showing them that, hey, we have a choice in what happens to these animals. And obviously most people you talk to, 99% of rational people care about animals. Who here thinks uh, animals can feel? Yeah. Who here found that hard to watch? Hard to watch? Yeah. That was hard to watch, yeah? It's interesting how when it's hidden from our, our eyes, it's so easy to purchase and to eat, isn't it? It's so easy for us to contribute to something we never see happening. But as soon as we show you, hey, this is where it comes from. It's a different story, isn't it? We're giving people sort of a visual idea of it. It's more powerful if we say, hey, these are the happy animals that are left alone. These are the victims of our food choices. Now, this is a very powerful thing. People cannot unsee what they've seen. And I found it's, the, it's probably the most effective thing you can do to leave a mark on someone. They can never forget it. And they will never look at their flesh on their plate the same ever again. Showing slaughterhouse footage does not lie. Everyone else is doing it. When I seen a burger, I still got hungry. I was like, mm, that's food. But after a while, of witnessing what animals have been. I've been inside a slaughterhouse too, like I, I was in a side of slaughterhouse while they were decapitating animals. So now when I see it, that's all I can see, is animals being cut up into pieces. And so I guess it's a matter of um, reminding yourself. It's interesting how these big corporations, you know, they're selling these animal bodies to us, never show us this, do they? They keep this hidden from us. Do you think they'd have so much success at selling their product when we met the victims? Because a big motivation for me was um, more than what other people thought of me was the fact that the, the animals were getting hurt and they, you know, they can't defend themselves and I, thought, I felt responsible for that. I had an epiphany. An epiphany is a moment of realisation, a great moment of clarity. And all animal products harm animals. I mean, yeah, yeah, no. the fact that they're chopped up in, on a plate means they were harmed, doesn't it? So. And also there's like, uh, many parts of the Quran talking about, uh, like, caring about animals. animals. I think this is probably the most powerful thing because um, the religion can have such a strong influence on people. So here we are at the Wailing Wall. This is a very religious place for Jews, a very significant place for Jews. Yeah, so people come into Jerusalem believing they're either Messiah or King David or Jesus. Yeah. Most of them, when they leave Jerusalem, it leaves them. It's not a city, it's a spiritual mental state. Oh wow. Jerusalem syndrome, check it out. Thanks mate. So apparently this is the grave of Jesus Christ. Okay, so we're in a very religious place here and they have this piece of chopped up, this looks like a chopped up cow. So they're chopping up, killing animals and selling it to people in such a religious holy place. I don't think it's okay to murder a chicken to gain forgiveness. 
I personally don't think it's okay to use religion to justify uh, killing an innocent animal. It's interesting they worship all these books and all these pieces of rocks and walls and stuff like that, but we do not show respect to the animals. I think uh, God is merciful, compassionate, loving. You think of God being merciful and compassionate, and of course they'd want us to show mercy to, to innocent beings. If we have alternatives to killing animals, of course they'd want us to, to go for the alternative. Yeah, so we're killing God's creation. Selling it. Here we go. Decapitated. Looks like a lamb, a bit decapitated. People think that God wants this. Birds. Birds, chopped up birds. More birds. I think you can get forgiveness without murdering a chicken. I think it's a bit ridiculous. So forcibly breeding animals into existence so we can take their life from them and eat their bodies. I don't think this is anything to do with um, God's wishes. Torture chambers and slaughterhouses. Animals being decapitated. Body parts sold. Like since when does killing give you forgiveness? I just think it just increases the evil on earth. I don't know what is sacred about selling the part of an animal who probably struggled for their last breath, who wanted to live. I, I just don't see the logic there. And yeah, like in there, it smells like a slaughterhouse, like blood and you know muscles of animals, bones chopped up. I mean, there's many things in religion that if we followed to the T, we'd be doing some really crazy things. These are the tongues of animals. I'm not sure what animals though. The liver, testicles. In the most holy city on earth. Like if we can't even learn to respect sentient life, how can we learn to respect each other? Okay. We give thanks to God for bread. We raise our voices all together. As our prayer is humbly said, Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Olam, Hamotzi Lechem Min Ha'aretz. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom is, um, have a wonderful and peaceful uh, Sabbath for the next 24 hours. They just have a good stuff happening. Just really peaceful and calm and connecting up. Wow. Yeah, that's the and, and what does this mean when we eat the bread? Being thankful that we get to eat bread. You know, that God gave us this bread. Grateful. It, yeah, that we're grateful that we have this. This is what it is because it's not a given. But I realized something. There was a group of beings out there that were suffering much more. And no one even recognized them as victims. No one cared about them at all. All of us in this room here, we can all agree Humans deserve the right to a life of freedom. Uh, women deserve rights. Uh, all types of races deserve the same equal right. But who here can agree that a cow deserves the same right to life? A pig, a chicken, a fish. If you as a human being expect fundamental rights of freedom and liberty not to be harmed, exploited, used and abused, same, you expect the same rights for your children, but you're excluding this whole other part of the sentient uh, community, it's pure hypocrisy, we can't do that. But I could walk into a place and people would laugh at me. They would laugh at me if I asked the right for a cow to live in freedom, in peace. They would laugh at me, and they do. I stand out the front of slaughterhouses with a sign saying, please don't eat these animals. And people beep and they laugh and they point their finger. If I was speaking up for dogs, would people beep and laugh and point their finger? We don't want animal welfare. We don't want happy slaves. And we don't want bigger cages. We want animals never to be used as products or to be treated as property ever again. You can always excuse the fact that killing animals is like part of uh, nature's way. Like we don't look to nature to, to see what's right and wrong, do we? Because otherwise we treat each other how lions treat gazelle. And so as human beings, we, we have sort of a obligation to, to act in a moral way. Animal welfare is looking after the treatment of an animal whilst they are still enslaved. They're not free. We're just saying, okay, we'll improve the conditions here. We'll give them a bigger cage. We'll set them out of their cage. No more cage. Here they can walk around free, but they'll still be used for their body, viewed at as a product, and killed at the end of the line. 
How is this welfare? This isn't welfare. That is disgraceful. That is disgraceful. What I support is leaving the animals alone. Stop breeding them into existence. Stop playing God with their lives. Set them free. The difference between animal welfare and animal liberation is freedom. They're treated as property. That is the, the fundamental problem here. And if we address that, then we liberate animals. They, they see it. They see it. They don't have a choice in that. Now, is that our fault that they are seeing something that they are directly funding? No, it's not. And I agree, not everyone should see this, but we are not the ones paying for it to happen. They, they have a responsibility uh, for paying for this. Now, I'd prefer not to show it. I'd prefer not to do something so forthright and just start showing slaughterhouse footage to people who haven't asked, asked to see that. But the animals didn't ask to be put in that slaughterhouse either. Now, you don't have to show slaughterhouse to do advocacy. You can just talk about animal use and how it's wrong to use them and how it's an injustice to enslave an animal and to exploit them for their body. You can have a, a positive conversation that someone would just go, wow, you don't need to show them what happens to animals. But I've found that it's a very profound way, a very quick way to snap someone out of it and go, wait, that's not food, that is violence. Apparently, if you put a little note in the wall, it could come true. I wish. Let's do it. So it's your job as an outreacher, when you're on vegan outreach, to never let them leave with the idea that this could be done better. That's about animal welfare, but we're about animal liberation. We don't want animals to be used as products at all. Okay, so we have our wish here. Liberation. The dairy industry or the meat industry and the egg industry telling us that our movement isn't working, that they're not afraid of what's happening with our movement, that they're not worried about it. Don't ever let the opposition tell you what your movement is. There's millions of us and we're a powerful force and they are concerned about that. They are concerned about that because their days are numbered with their exploiting animals, that's for sure.